Welcome to the rundown, courtesy of AGL. A couple of changes at the selection table for the West Coast Eagles. We'll talk about that in a moment. But first of all, major changes here at the desk. Uh, Andrew Embley, you're a regular. Welcome to you. I am, lucky. I love my Friday mornings. I wouldn't miss this morning for the world. <laughs> <laughs> and welcome to Paddy Sweeney, a.k.a. Willie Rioli. Yeah, look, been a little bit ill-disciplined, Locke. Had to give myself some time away, but I'm back on the rundown. <laughs> love to be here, boys. Hey, guys, very quickly, first of all, how have we summed up the Eagles season to date? We've hit the mid-season. We're now looking towards the finals. Embers, you, what, what do you give it out of, uh, you know, a mark A, B or C? I reckon I'd give West Coast an A-. minus. Not a lot of people have been very critical of the West Coast Eagles this year, but I thought their first half of the season was always going to be the most challenging. JK was coming off no pre-season. We knew Andrew Gaff was going to miss the first three games. Now, according to champion data, West Coast have had the toughest draw out of anyone. And I think they've got through pretty well. 9-4, well and truly entrenched in the top four and their second half of the season opens up. We really know that they're going to get some players back. So I'm being quite impressed with West Coast. The only concern, though, is some of their losses that they have had have been blown away in them. I reckon you're being kind. I reckon you're being kind. When you get the school report each and every semester after uh, you've had a semester at school, I always got could do better, loses concentration in class, which I reckon the Eagles have lost concentration during games, and you have the potential to be an A grader, and they have the potential to be an A grader. Uh, mine usually said, you've got to meet the parents. I don't think the Eagles have to meet the parents just yet, but uh, I reckon a B. What do you reckon, Paddy? I'm B+. Plus. I was teetering on the edge of an A. I think they're sitting quite nicely. They're fourth. They're the reigning champs. A win this weekend, they can go to third. Um, Nick Nat coming back, Willie Rioli's obviously it. Tom Barris is going to come back in the next couple of weeks as well. Wins over Collingwood at the G, that looks really good. GWS here at home, yeah, they expected to win that, they got it done. And then they got a, a job done over in Adelaide as well against uh, the Crows. So I think they look good. As Ember said though, the losing margins, all four losses have been by more than seven goals. So that's concerning. And that may come back to hurt them because their percentage is 106 and it's not good enough at the moment. Why do you think they've been losing big time when they actually uh, get behind teams? Well, when you look at the games that I've lost this year, Geelong and Geelong have always been a very difficult ground to win at. Sydney in Sydney, West Coast haven't won there since 1999. And Brisbane, first game of the year, we thought that it was going to be quite difficult. So when you look at some of those losses there, it's maybe not surprising that they have been blown away. Um, certainly the Sydney game, I thought Elliot Yo not being in there through the midfield, no Shannon Hearn. So there was reasons, maybe the reasons, why they were beaten so badly in that particular game. But that's why I'm not actually too concerned with the West Coast Eagles, with uh, the way they're going at the moment. I think they're playing some pretty good football and their best, in my opinion, is ahead of them. Nick Natanui is back. The heart's beating a little bit. I'm not a West Coast Eagles fan, but I am that excited to see <laughs> Nick Natanui back playing footy. It's absolutely unbelievable. How are you feeling, being an Eagle, knowing Nick Nat, what he's been through? Well, I think it's just great for the West Coast Eagles. It's great for Nick to be able to be back out there playing. He's arguably one of the most popular West Coast Eagles players to have ever played for the club. And he gets his opportunity to be able to go to the MCG this week and, uh, and play some football. And um, you know, let's not underestimate the impact that Nick Nat knew he has. They were 10-1 and one to start the season last year on the back of Nick Nat around the contest. So he's absolutely crucial to the way they set up around the football. And I can assure you the Eagles mids at the moment are just licking their lips that Nick Nat is coming back into that side. All right, so what happens from now on? Obviously, it's Hickey and Nat Nui tomorrow. We saw last year that it was Lysett and Vardy who got them through to the Premiership. What's the best combination with Nick Nat as the number one ruckman? Well, for mine, yeah, Paddy, I think at the moment, I think Hickey's good because I expect that Nick Nat is not going to play a lot around the contest. He's going to have to spend a little bit time forward, Nick Nat Nui, just to get his confidence back, to start to get a bit of match fitness. So I think Hickey at the moment, to be able to share that load through the middle of the ground will be crucial. But for mine, towards the second half of the year, West Coast are going to have to want Nick Nat Nui around the contest a lot more. So therefore, I think if it's going to be Hickey or Vardy, I think whichever of those two can play the forward line role better, I think we'll probably get the nod for mine. That's the problem, though, mm. because Hickey and Vardy aren't getting on the scoreboard at the moment. Now, last year, Lysett got amongst the scoreboard. Vardy was actually pretty good forward. I actually think the best combination will be Nick Natanui and Oscar Allen. 
Yeah, that's interesting. I think at the moment, as it stands, the Nick Nat Hickey is the one to go just because of what we've seen this year. And he's done pretty well, Tom Hickey, in his first year at the club. I like what you say about Oscar Allen, though. I think he's got great versatility and flexibility. He can play forward, back. He's going to be playing defence mm. this week, obviously, with no Tom Barras and, and Jeremy McGovern. But he could be the player. And I think if his body can hold up to it in his second year, he could be the one. But I think towards the end of the year, Nathan Vardy might have a bit of a shot of it because we saw that in the grand final last year. Fourth yes. quarter, a big pack mark, went back and kicked the goal. He can. Play. He looks more of a natural mm. forward than Tom Hickey. But is he, is he good enough to dislodge him from that spot? We'll have to wait and see. Are we, are we getting too serious, Embers? You're a regular on the show. The Goss, he's had surgery this week, so shout out to the Goss. Hopefully you're getting better. No, you're going very well, Lockie. Or? No, you're going very well at the moment, Lockie. Okay. I'm, uh, I'm a bit nervous. Quite impressed. Because yeah. the great man. And then Ryan Daniels down the other yeah. end. There's a lot of pressure on Paddy and I in this show. Uh, courtesy back of next week. <laughs> <laughs> I've week. Let's talk about the Hawks game tomorrow, because uh, very excited about... Uh, I think that was their best game of footy last week, the West Coast Eagles, for the whole season. Now the challenge is to carry it to the MCG, a ground that they're pretty comfortable at. They've won their last four there. Yeah, I expect West Coast to be too strong. I think Hawthorne are a, a developing young side at the moment. West Coast do have some key outs uh, in their back line. Obviously, Barris who hasn't been out there for a while in the suspension to McGovern. So they're going to have to shuffle. Um, as you said, Oscar Allen will have to spend a bit of time back. So, But I still think West Coast have got a little bit too much class. And as you said, they were very good last uh, week against... Um, Whoever they played. The Bombers. The Bombers, yeah, yep. that's right, the Bombers. <laughs> um, so I think, then, as I said, the second half of the year really does open up for them. So I expect they'll be too strong. So, Paddy, uh, think, go through the Hawks now and tell me who is the player that they'd be most concerned with. Yeah, I'm going to choose a player out of there in the ground, and even this depends on the way Alistair Clark's is. Sirio is not member. playing, mate. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's start again. Back to the jury. <laughs> but I'll tell you, Brett, he's yeah. not playing, mate. <laughs> Dipper? <laughs> Jack Gunston in the forward line. I just think his ability, he's got elite skills. His finishing mm. is just absolutely phenomenal in front of goals. He can play tall and small as well, and he has a history of running the Eagles around. In defence, I really want this bloke to, to play down back. He's been absolutely superb. He's James Sicily. The last fortnight, he's played forward, and it just hasn't worked for Hawthorne. You play him in defence, and he's the equal first for contested marks out of all the defenders. He's got the second most marks in the competition and the third most intercept marks. So he can really set Hawthorne up from that half-back line if Alistair Clarkson sends him back there. And that's where I think Hawthorne could actually get West Coast. I think they've got Ruffhead, they've got Gunston, they've got Bruce, they've got Puapolo. Their forward line's not too bad. I think James Sicily's needed down back. So you mentioned one guy there that I reckon could carve him up at Luke Bruce. I reckon he's an underestimated player. So this year so far he's kicked uh, five goals in a game, four goals and had two bags of three goals. The one thing about Luke Bruce, I reckon, in the second half of the season for the Hawks Embers is that there's a lot of talk about the possibility of him being traded. He will want to turn it on in the second half of the season to make sure that he gets to a club of his choice. Yeah, and as you said, Gunston and also Bruce as well inside that Ford 50, knowing too that West Coast haven't got their best back line. Yeah. So again, that supply battle becomes crucial. If Hawthorne can start to win some football through the midfield and they can go inside Ford 50, then suddenly guys like Gunston, guys like Bruce will be thinking, you know, I'm going to back myself one-on-one -on -one to be able to kick a winning score. I do like Sicily though. I think he's the kind of player for mine that could really maybe rough a few feathers up he for the West Coast the Eagles. Team, and he? I think West Coast, if everything just goes along nicely, I think West Coast will be too strong. But if Sicily can actually start to put a bit of pressure on, start to get the Eagles off their game, then it may just give Hawthorne a slight advantage in You're this one. You're not going to get the Eagles off their game. Oh, I mean, JK's the most try, calm try bloke something. in the history of the world. He doesn't get ruffled at all. Jack Daly doesn't know who plays on him. He just goes out and kicks bags of goals. You've got to try something. You've got to try, try something. Because if you just go, if Alistair Clarkson, and Alistair Clarkson won't, but if they just think they're just going to roll them out and just see what they can do, then they won't get the job done. Before we go, uh, West Coast injury list looks really good. Tommy Barris, of course, missed with a knock to the calf in the WAFL, but you'd think he'd be back next week as well. Well, timing is everything for the West Coast Eagles for mine. I think they've got one of the most talented lists in the competition, and now they're looking at actually getting all their players fit and available, which, um, and as I said to you early on, 
West Coast draw does open up in the second half of the year. So I think um, look for the West Coast Eagles to have a real good charge towards September. All right, well, we've got to wrap it up. I know Goss usually goes for about five hours, but I like <laughs> to keep it short and sharp. Uh, thank you to you, Paddy Sweeney. Thanks Terrific job. Uh, you may be back next week. Doubtful. In Doubtful. Doubt, <laughs> in doubt. Embers, we just can't get rid of you. No, you so can't. So good luck to you, and we'll see you next week. And I don't know whether I'll be here. Uh, Gossage is in hospital at the moment, and we send our best wishes to him. Hopefully he'll be up and about next week. Uh, that is it. Good luck to the West Coast Eagles tomorrow against Hawthorne. It's going to be a beauty. Nick Natanui is back in action with thanks to AGL. This has been The Rundown.